Hello, my friend, how are you doing? Um, just want to show you really quickly how you can check for normality in your in your data, something which is very important for a number of tests. It's an important assumption. Like, for example, if you're running in a COVA, you need to test for the normality of your data set. Um, and to show you how you can do this, I have here a fictitious data set of age of drummers. So let's say there's a study on drummers and you're looking into the, their age and you want to know if you have a normal distribution. So if you click on Analyze in our top menu, so just reminding you every test on statistic on SPSS starts here on top with the Analyze uh, on menu. Then we're going to scroll down to Descriptive. Within Descriptive, we're going we're gonna to scroll down to Explore. So Analyze, Descriptive, Explore. Click there. This window pops up. What we're going to do now is drag to this box here of Dependent List the variable that we want to check for normality. So in this case, obviously, Age of Drummers. If we click on statistics here, nothing really important that we you need to to, uh, to check. But plots here, it's something really important. Uh, stem and leaf we can uncheck; that's not relevant. Now histogram we're going to check, and please don't be like my students that call it Instagram. It's not Instagram; it is histogram. So we click there and click on normality plots with tests. Very important. Then click on continue, and then we can simply click on OK. And we've got our results. Now, what should we look for? We have here a description of cases, so the number of respondents, missing values, and so on. Here we've got our descriptives. The most important here for us is in the end skewness and kurtosis. Now, to interpret this, think of it that it should be values between minus one and one. So anything between minus one and zero, zero and one, that's what we want because that's going to be an indication that we have a normally distributed data. Any value above one or above minus one, that's not exactly good, and it can show, it will give us an indication of skewness or either kurtosis, that the data is either going to one side or, or to, um, towards the other, okay? In this case here, all the values are between minus one and one. So that's good, it's an early indication that we probably have a normally distributed data. The second table is very important, test for normality. We have here our KS, and Shapiro Wilk. What we want is that for each test, the value is above 0.05. In other words, that it is non-significant. Um, so the KS result here, it is non-significant. The Shapiro Wilk is also non-significant. That is good in this case, indicating a normal distribution in our data set. Now, it can happen that the, the KS will be, for example, non-significant. Sorry, it will be significant and the Shapiro will be non-significant. So they have contradicting results. When this is the case, normally what is reported is the Shapiro Wilk because it tends to be more robust. And you can sort of check with data sets up to, for example, 2,000 cases. So it's normally what you find people reporting are more the Shapiro Wilk. But it's good to test both and you can report both as well. So here is a great indication, both of them saying that it's uh, non-significant, therefore that you have a normally distributed data set. If we scroll down and we have our histogram uh, graph and we can check more or less the shape of the distribution of the data, here we have a bell shape, so we have a fairly distribution of, of the bell shape, which is also good that it indicates the normal distribution. And finally here in the end, we have our uh, Q-plot, where you have a normal distribution line and all of the cases should be pretty much aligned with it. So as we see here, pretty much every value is distributed along this line, which also indicates um, a normal distribution. So just to review to you one more time, check for skewness and kurtosis. These values should be between minus one and one. Then check for the test for normality, you should report uh, it as well. We have a KS and shapiro wilk all of these should be, both should be above 0 0.05. Then check for your um, histogram to see more or less the shape of the distribution of your data. And the more that it looks like that famous uh, bell curve, the better. And in the end, our Q plots where all of the values should be distributed along our central line, okay? So that those are the four the main steps that you need to go through. Don't forget on the playlist of here on live innovation on my channel there's a uh, plenty of other tutorials on SPSS uh, that you can that you can uh, learn from also on liveinnovation.org on the website there's an e-guide uh, for statistics called the melody of statistics a beautiful name um, that you can also uh, check okay and to finish off my song recommendation my music recommendation as always 
I would recommend a beautiful song by the Beatles called She's Leaving Home from a wonderful album called um, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. That's my favorite album from the Beatles. So listen to She's Leaving Home by the Beatles. You're going to love this track, okay? Wish you a beautiful day. All the absolute best. Take care and bye-bye.